Hello friends, this is Mike Williams. I get asked many times about what are the fictional passages in memoirs, along with hearing the declarations by others that the book is complete fiction and should not be taken seriously. So I thought I would sit down and offer my perspective. Before we get started, this video is geared to those people who have read memoirs. If you haven't read memoirs, but feel compelled to comment or editorialize on the book, you are speaking from an uninformed position. I'm sorry if this comes across overly direct, but it makes no sense to debate with anyone who is avoiding the book for whatever reason. With that being said, here is my perspective on what the fictional aspects of memoirs are and why it is not what most people think. The fiction is structured in a way which leverages what people do not or will not accept. So if someone does not believe in something, then whatever clashes with their belief system is typically rejected and discarded. So the rejected and discarded aspect of the narrative becomes fiction for that person. We might want to look at this approach as a psychological thread running through the book which understands human behavior and reaction. In other words, we reject what we don't understand or do not believe. Let's move now to some examples. Let's start with the obvious. Paul did not die and therefore the entire book is nonsense. If this is your view, then you won't read the book. Case closed. Then we have the other viewpoint. Paul did die or was replaced, but he did not die in a car crash. Therefore, the car crash is fiction. He did not participate in a ritual. Many people believe rituals are nonsense. Therefore, the ritual is fiction. The Beatles were not immersed in the occult. Many reject the concept or reality of the occult, so the occult becomes fiction. The notion of secret societies, Freemasons and the Illuminati, or a controlling entity, the Pyramid of Power, is ridiculous to some people. It doesn't exist, so that premise becomes fiction. For many people, the use of doubles or lookalikes is a crazy concept. That becomes fiction. If you believe Aleister Crowley and his doctrines are wacky, or his influence is overstated, then the importance of Crowley's role regarding Billy and the Beatles becomes fiction. Believing there is no way Billy played a version of Vivian Stanshall makes the Stanshall narrative fiction. Rejecting Tavistock, or at least Tavistock's role in the creation of the Beatles, becomes fiction. Believing numbers and numerology is a waste of time makes that part of the book fiction. I can go on and on with many more examples, but I hope you get the point. For me personally, I knew before reading the book that doubles and lookalikes are used all the time for psyops and covert activity. I knew that Tavistock is in the business of psychological conditioning and manipulation, meaning social engineering and mind control is what they do. I know that secret societies are real, and our reality is controlled. I also knew going in that magic and the occult, which includes numbers, is the foundation of many secret societies going back to the ancient mysteries. And I know that signs and symbols rule the world. And of course I knew these things because of years of research and looking into these topics. So when I read the book, I was less likely to reject aspects of the narrative. Not that I didn't have questions, but for the questions I did have, I went off and I did research. For example, I was not sold on the Stanchel Ackrell piece of the book. In fact, I knew nothing of Vivian Stanchel before I read memoirs. So I thought, let's take a look into it. And I did. So, am I saying you must simply accept everything in the book as true or run with everything I have presented? No. What I'm saying is, read the book and do your own research and come to your own conclusions. It's also important, in my opinion, not to toss the entire narrative out because of something in the book you do not agree with or believe. In other words, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Because you believe something in the book is not true does not mean everything in the book is false. And when reading the book, it is important to dig into the encoding if you really want to get the full story. I have personally concluded the book is truthful. I also prefer to focus on the bigger picture of the how and why this was all done. I have said in previous shows that biological Paul has become a subplot for me. And it's not that I don't care about the death of someone. I certainly do. But for me, I needed to move past the traditional narratives so I could understand why this all took place. Everyone involved had a role to play in this conspiracy, which is about drastically changing the mindset of our collective society and culture. And for better or worse, that includes biological Paul's role. I have concluded the Beatles played a major role in that shift and that agenda. And what is that agenda? It's an agenda to instill a Luciferian mindset which will ultimately lead to a one-world government and a one-world religion.
My McCartney presentations and interviews reflect my findings and my perspectives, which I have decided to share. Someone else might and will have a different position, and that's fine. I am not in the business of convincing anyone of anything. I learned a long time ago, attempting to change people's positions when they are not ready to change is a waste of time and effort. So I will leave it here regarding what I believe to be the fictional components of memoirs. If my logic resonates, that's great. If it doesn't, that's okay too. To each his own. The comment section is open, and thanks as always for taking a listen.